name. He said, I am that I am. I am your healer. I'm your deliverer. I'm your sanctification. Come on, man. How many of y'all want God to sanctify you, clean you up? Come on, man. Clean you up, right? As we go through, as we go through, and as the flames of life get higher, right? They get hotter and hotter and hotter. It cleans us up, man. It burns up the purification of our soul, of our spirit, of our mindset. God is cleaning us up. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. And as he clean us up, then he fill us up. Come on, man. How many of y'all can use a refilling right now, man? Come on, man. He's a great God. He's a good God. He's a mighty God, man. He's a mighty God. And it's no work of our own. No works of our own. Only what we do for Christ. In other words, only what you do in your recovering process. Come on, man. Staying clean got to come first. But come on, man. It's the work. It's the work. It's the work. It's the work. And then he said, greater work we'll do. Come on. Come on. Come on. We talking about an awesome God. Come on. Come on. We talking about a God who got the whole wide world in his hand. <laughs> I remember that song as a child. He got the little bitty babies in his hand. Come on. He got the judges. He got the lawyers in his hand. He got the prosecutor. He got a defender in his hand. Come on, man. He got me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, taste and see how good the Lord is, man. Come on. Yes. Fill us up, God. It's your presence. Just to be in your presence, God. Fill us, God. Come on, God. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us the more. Fill us the more. Fill us the more. My God. My God. That way we can leave different than the way we came. Come on, God. Come on. Come on, God. Come on. We waiting on you, God. We waiting on you, God. Come on, man. Come on, God. You're an awesome God. For 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. Come on. How many of y'all waiting for the overflow? Come on. I'm talking about the overflow. I'm talking about the overflow. I'm talking about the overflow. Fill me up with our overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up. I want God to bless me so much that I can start giving stuff away, man. Tell you, man, I ain't selfish no more. I'm not self-centered anymore. Thank you, God. Thank you. I understand when y'all say you're on the key with your hand back giving it away. I understand that now. I ain't no way I understand it. No. 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 I ain't want to get none of my coke away. I smoked everything. I won't share it with nobody. <laughs> I want to run over. Yup. Till I overflow, I wanna run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Hey, fill me up till I overflow. I don't know about you, but I, I look, I don't get tired of standing in his presence. I, 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 look, I, I am so grateful to be able to stand in his presence. Because somebody didn't get up last night, early this morning, when God's so fit for us to rise. Somebody ain't rise. And then somebody out there still geek, somebody that's still using right now, man. And I'm just grateful. So I need to be filled up, man. All of my mercy. That's why the Bible said new mercy. New mercy. Because I know I ran out all of my mercy yesterday. I did some stuff yesterday. I'm telling you, man. And I ain't got time to point the finger at nobody else. Right? Because if I point at you, I got three pointed back at me. 
I, I ain't got time to judge nobody else. Come on, man. I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful for the refilling. I'm grateful that you guys taught me the simple concept of one day at a time, man. And then, hey, Mike, hey, Mike, this is what they told me. Don't even count your days. Make your days count. Come on, man. I'm talking about the work, man. Until we overflow, man. Come on, man. I'm talking about the goodness of Jesus and all he done for us. Come on, let's just give him that last hand clap of praise. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. It's just something about worshiping God and, and song and and in spirit and in truth. It's just something about that that moment of clarity. You know, when you, when you could come into a space and it and the, if the atmosphere if the atmosphere is right, man, sometimes you, you don't have to say nothing. Just in the wary, right? Right? Just it's in the atmosphere, right? Right? And when you have someone who's conducting the service, right? Who have been spending time with God and and, and, and I'm, I'm just a leader. I'm, I'm not in charge of anything, man. But I'm telling you, man, that preparation time. When, when, when God give you an assignment, right? And however your preparation time you use to spend time with God, I'm telling you, man, in that moment of deliverance, you know, you don't get all out that God has given you because some of he wants you to keep for yourself. But I'm telling you, man, the more you give, the more God give unto you. You can't be God given no matter how hard you try. So I tell you, when, when I get in this space, I am so grateful because I know the atmosphere in my life changed. Because I, I still don't feel worthy. That's why my atmosphere. I don't feel like I should be here. My, look, my gratitude speaks. Here it is. If I got what I deserve, I wouldn't be here. So I thank God, I thank God, I thank God for his mercy, right? I thank God. God's mercy is what he don't give you and you deserve. That's God's mercy. Lord, have mercy on me because we deserve what he didn't give you. That's the mercy of God. And God's grace is, is what he gives you and you don't deserve. Come on, man. I look at the lifestyle I live. I don't deserve it. I don't, I don't deserve it. In spite of the work, right? Right? Because faith without work, right? In spite of the work, I'm telling you, man, in spite of the work, it still had to be this way. It, it, it could have been, in spite of the work, it could have been a, a whole nother way. In spite of the work, because this is the blessings of God. A lot of us get the work, right? A lot of us have done the work. We have done the work. We have a tendency of looking at how other people are rewarded, and we still count ourselves as least of the brothers. In spite of us doing the work, come on, come on. In spite of us, we ain't using. We go, we find the job. You know, we we, we don't get the job that that we think we deserve, but but we got a job. Some of us ain't grateful, and some of us are grateful, right? In spite of the work, but it's God's blessing, it's God's grace, it's God's favor. Oh, man, our responsibility is what? To do the work. And we ain't responsible for what? The outcome. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that God choose to use me in this space. But I really want to challenge. I'm telling you, man, I want to challenge anybody who choose to be challenged. In other words, you got to study. But this is what I want to do, Mike. I really want anybody, especially, especially from the healing place, man. I want a Sunday that we come in here and you facilitate the service, man tell you man i'm telling you i just want to challenge you man i just want you to challenge you and so, and so what's going to happen right i'm going to give you a format i'm going to give them a format Melvina, and they're going to spend time with god and going to see how the order of the service go man and i tell you it's it's going to be those moments right right because everything is i mean it's, it's, a, it's a structure outline right but in between with, with that space with that space now i'm gonna tell you what this space means when you read whatever god gave you and that space, it's going to give you time to repent. Because how can you challenge somebody else to do something you're not doing? 
So in your moment time and your quiet time with God, as you prepare yourself, God will begin dealing with you. Because this is what happened. When you come before the people, Candy, God works through your authenticness. Just be authentic. Be who you are. And watch how somebody else bless. They get blessed by you being who you are. Don't try to be nobody else. I ain't trying to be no, no TD. No, nah, I can't be no TD Jays. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and, and look, hey, hey, and, and that's the truth. It's a lot easier to be me. It's a lot easier to be me, man. So I, I, I really want to challenge anybody who choose to uh, to see me after the service. I, I, I will put a format in your hand, and if you feel led by God to come and open up the service and have a God use you, man, you you are welcome. But this is not look, this is not my ministry. God bless me to name it breaking the bondage of addiction ministry. God bless me the name of this is God's work. And guess what? You guys are God's business. I'm just grateful that he put me in a position, right? Amen. So I would like to welcome everyone to breaking the bondage of addiction ministry. This is a non-denomination spiritual ministry where anyone may join us. We know it was the drugs, alcohol, or other addictive behavior that got us here to this ministry. But it is God, as we understand him, who lead us into a lifestyle of change. How many of y'all know change ain't change until you change? Come on, man. Come on. And if nothing change, nothing change. Come on. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you because this is the day that you have made. And God, we just come to rejoice. And we are glad in it from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Your name alone is worthy to be praised. Your name, God, your name bring about healing. Your name bring about deliverance. Lord God, your name, when your name is spoken, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that the name of Jesus. Come on, Lord God, we thank you because you wrap yourself in, in the form of a man. And, and you came down at, as a man's servant just to show us the way. And you said, you said, God, if, if, if you just be lifted up, come on. Jesus came just to lift up the Father. And because Jesus lifted up the Father, he was lifted up. And Lord God, through the lifting of your name, you drew all mans unto you. So God, we thank you for drawing us on this morning, Lord God. Lord God, you touch our heart just with the touch of your love. And Lord God, with the touch of your love, it allowed the blood to run warm in our veins. And with the blood running warm in our veins, it gives us all the activity of our limbs. So with our hands lifted up and our mouth filled with praise, we just want to thank you, Lord God. We thank you for last night. We want our last night. We thank you, Lord God. God, you have been so good to us. God, you have been better to us than we've been to ourselves, God. So we want to thank God. We had a thousand tongues. We can thank you enough. So we just want to come together, Lord God, for this appointed time just to praise you in songs, just to praise you with the reading of your word, just to praise you with the viewing of the video, Lord God. Because you say in all things, in all things, the earth is the Lord, the foot is thereof, and everything that dwells belongs to you. So here we are, God. You are our God. And we are your people. Use us as you please. And God, we're going to be so careful to give your name all the glory and all the honor. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Come on, if you agree with me in that prayer, can you just clap your hands? Just a sign of agreement. Amen. If there is anyone here attending Breaking the Bondage of Addiction Ministry for the first time, we would like to welcome you. Feel free to worship God as you choose to in this space. Please come again 
And all we ask you to do is to tell a friend. That's it, man. That's it. Amen. Amen. Now, we do have our, our, our ministry statement, but I'm going to ask our niece. I saw her sneak in here. Uh, hey, baby girl. Hey, Janet. Hey, family. I'm going to ask our niece if she's going to come. Uh, she got it. Come on, our niece. Come on. She's going uh, she to serve us with a song. And I tell you, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited even on yesterday. I'm going to tell you all a little bit about yesterday. But I'm going to let our niece. She, gonna, uh, she got a mic. She good. Okay. You're coming up. You're going down. Where are you going? How are you going to do it? Have the Lord. As long as you're in the space, we are right. Um, this morning, right. I am like all over the place. Take your time. Take your time. That's all. Because every day I have this like system I go through that I do. Like my earrings, my watch, my bracelet, my nose ring. This morning, I left my earrings. I just sat over there and lost my nose ring. And I'm like, dang, man, oh my God, I gotta get in front of them. So the only thing I can do is like, ask y'all to stand with me and listen to the words of this song and just, just praise them. That's all I can do. And I'm doing it to get out my own way. Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit. 
You may be seen in his presence. You know, uh, and it's just it's, it's, it's just coming to me when I talk about that that preparation stage, and when I talk about what comes from the heart reaches the heart, and uh, and I don't know if y'all saw what happened, uh, what had just happened. It, it, it was right at the end of the song, right when 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 Mike Mike turned on the volume and. Or niece, she started she started singing out her heart. She started singing it was like the, the music is like she sung her authentic space. See, it's, it's 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 right now. She may have to go through all of that to get to that space. But I'm telling you, Anissa, come here, Anissa. I'm, I'm being I'm being I'm being so honest right now, you guys. It, it was that last that last part. Hey, hey, Jess, can you get the mic back? Can you get the mic back? It was that last part right there that the anointing came in because she asked for the Holy Spirit to fall down. But it was in that last thing. Did y'all hear that? It was that last. I'm, I'm going to show you God. Can you sing that last part? Help her out, man. Sing that last part. I'm telling you, I know God. I know God. Spirit. Woo. y'all man that 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 wasn't even for her that won't for her that was for god man because see god wanted to get the glory out of everything we do i'm not talking about the performance i want y'all to hear this man i'm not talking about the performance i don't care if you play a song on the on the video or whatever and all that that ain't it's, it's right at the end candace i'm telling you man i know god when i hear god man and, and, and that space right there when you came up here, I ain't got my earrings. I ain't got care about the nose ring. Okay, that's your stuff. We ain't up here for us. We up here so God can get the glory. And right at, man, I tell you, I know God, and I'm just grateful that you humble yourself just for the word of God. So let's thank God one more time for that. Come on. Ah! Woo! Oh, this is a spiritual ministry. This is a spiritual mentor. God will use whoever make themselves available. Amen. Amen. Because God want to operate in your authentic space. Come on, man. Come on, man. It's that space that dwell within you that you haven't even touched into it yet. Because God give you the power to carry that out. You can't even move without God's power. And God operate in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 All right, here we go. Breaking the bondage of addiction mission statement. Here it is. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted 
and to proclaim liberty woo, to the captive and the open of the prison to them that are bound. God, man. Oh, my God. Here it is. Here it is. Now I'm going to read Breaking the Bondage of Addiction Goals. These are goals. Our goals is to enlighten, empower, and equip individuals with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom through the word of God concerning addictive behavior. That's our goal. Our goal. That's our goal. It's to enlighten, empower, and equip individuals through knowledge, understanding, and wisdom through the word of God concerning addictive behavior. Your sponsor, your sponsor should have knowledge of working a step. And what your sponsor do, he helps you to get the understanding of how the steps work. But it's only God who gives us the wisdom to know the difference. Come on, man. That's the goal of the ministry, man. That's the goal. That's the goal. All right. At this time, I'm going to have a participant going to come up and they're going to read the 12 steps of life recovery. Where is that participant at? Come on. Let God use. Here you go. Come on. Let's thank God for that man of God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. I love that walk like, like, like he going a long way. Right? Right? But can you imagine how many brain, how many chains are being broken? You remember how you, know, you go, you pick up and go get that white key tag and you take that long walk to pick that white key? And how much shame and guilt get dropped off, man? Come on, man. Come on, man. Read that for us, man. Read that for us. Good morning, family. Thank God. <clears throat> Give an honor and glory to God. <clears throat> Give it honor and glory to God for more and more blessings flow. Yes, yes. My name is Wayne. Hey, Wayne. And I'll be reading the 12 steps of life recovery. The first steps read, we admit we were powerless over our addiction and dysfunctional behaviors and that our lives had become unmanageable. The second step read, we came to believe that God, a power greater than ourselves, <clears throat> could restore us to sanity and stability. Step three reads, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as revealed in the Bible. Step four reads, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Step five reads, we admitted to God to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our own. Step six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Step seven reads, we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. Step eight reads, we made a list of all persons we have harmed and became willing, willing to make amends to them all. Step nine reads, we made direct amends to such people wherever, whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Step nine reads, we continue to take personal inventory and we and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Step 11 reads, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as revealed in the Bible. Praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Step 12 reads, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry these messages to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Thank you for letting me read. Thank you. Bless you, man. Thank you. Thanks for helping out. Thanks for helping out with the reading. At this time, I'm going to ask a participant to come and read the 12 laws of life recovery. Come on, let's thank God for him. Come on. Good 
everybody. My name is Justin, and I am a grateful recovering addict. The 12 laws of life recovery. The first law reads, powerlessness will result in strength. The second law reads, humility will result in honor. The third law reads, connection will result in love. The fourth law reads, willingness will result in growth. The fifth law reads, sacrifice will result in fulfillment. The sixth law reads, faith will result in hope. The seventh law reads, surrender will result in victory. The eighth law reads, service will result in reward. The ninth law, my favorite, forgiveness will result in freedom. The tenth law reads, confession will result in healing. The eleventh law reads, restitution will result in closure. And the twelfth law reads, responsibility will result in security. Thank you. Amen. Now we have the 12 gifts of life recovery. God Almighty, like he ready to preach, y'all. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Good morning, family. Praise God. Praise God. I'm Thaddeus and I'm an addict. The 12 gifts of life recovery. The first gift is hope. The second gift is power. The third gift is character. The fourth gift is clarity. The fifth gift is security. The sixth gift is abundance. The seventh gift is wisdom. The eighth gift is self-control. The ninth gift is freedom. The tenth gift is happiness. And the eleventh gift is serenity. The twelfth gift is peace. And thank you for letting me. Amen. So I thank everyone for our reading. Right here it said um, it's given time and everyone can participate in the three T's. The three T's which are time, your talent, and your treasures. And our ways of giving is now through Venmo uh, at Machine Foundation Spiritual Service uh, 3619. So uh, we definitely going to look at Venmo. If you have Venmo, if you want to give that way, that's fine. If you prepare yourself to give today, I mean, I always come prepared. Uh, if I'm going to talk about preparation, then I need to be prepared, right? Amen. Amen. So, uh, hey, Chris, want to get want to get a bass? Anybody else want to give? And if you don't have, I don't know. Look, I, I, I see Mike. Mike, my, I already know. If, if you don't, can it? They, they look. Anybody? Look, who don't have a want to give? I'm good. I'm good. I got one. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I see five people. So Candy got one. Let me see what y'all doing right here. Cause, cause, so whoever, whoever don't, after they, after they do what they do, y'all just let me know. I'm gonna be like Jesus, right? When he fed the, he took the five loaves and the two fish, and he fed the multitude. You know, he had the leftovers. Well, I got leftovers. So whoever don't have the give, I got you. Because I want to make sure everybody have to give. Amen. So who don't have? Hurry up. Slip your hand up. That's five. I got you. Who else don't got? Who don't got it? Who don't got it? All right. Well, I'll tell you what. All right. If, if you did slip your hand up, I'm going to put, put extra in for you just in case you didn't slip your hand up. Amen. Because look, when I was a newcomer, this is what happened to me when I was a newcomer, right? We used to go out to the restaurants, right? Unstop. <laughs> Place like unserved. We, we go fellowship, right? And I already know. Look, I just started smoking two days ago. I ain't had nothing. And they told me to jump in the car. Jump in people. We say jump in back pockets. We, we jumped in cars. It wasn't but a few people had cars back then anyway. But we jumped in cars. And, and I just wanted fellowship. So when they showed up, and look, if the food won't like was $30 or $40, like you got to pay now. But I still didn't had $3.99 for no pancakes. But I ordered them. And Estelle, Estelle used to take care of them pancakes, too. And they said, Walter, when you get to the place, just give back. So that's the only reason why I check with you guys, because they check with me. So I got to give back what was given to me. That's all. That's the only reason why I do this. I don't do this to be seen. I want to make sure y'all understand that. But I do want to be seen giving. Come on, man. Because anytime God asks, and you know you got, right? The only way you keep what you have is by giving it away. Blessing somebody else, man. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this space. 
uh, the Hear the Machine Foundation allow us to help you to grow. And you'll see, because as you sow seeds, I'll tell you, man, some of you guys are going to reap some 30, some 60, even 100 fold. I mean, it's in God's word. It's in God's word. So trust God. Because you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. God so loved. Come on, man. This is how, how much God gave. He so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That's how much God loved. And that's what he gave. So you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. Amen. Now look, I'm going to make this statement real quick. This is not to put nobody on blast. I do not know. Thank you, sir. I do not know your religious preference. If your religious preference entitled you to keep your head on, keep your head on. I don't know nobody religious preference. If your religious preference don't entitle you to keep your head off, the COO, y'all know Jess. <laughs> you want to make sure I let you guys know to take your hats off in the facility. But again, if that's your religious preference, I don't struggle with that. I, I don't struggle with that. I just try to be obedient to the word. Amen. Amen. So uh, at this time, right, because we got uh, we got we got enough space this weekend. Let me show you all what happened uh, with this man's conference that we had. This weekend, right? We had a uh, man's conference uh, Friday night. We had uh, a great speaker. Uh, it was at Children of God Church, Victor Tabernacle, uh, Pastor Derek Peterson. He came here one time and he spoke to the congregation. So the men are uh, the healing place. Hey, the guys from the healing place who went, can y'all just stand up? I'm going to show y'all some. All the guys from the healing place who went, can y'all stand up? Amen. Amen. And look. And all the men from Machine who went, can y'all also stand up? Can y'all stand up? Okay, okay, come on, come on. And I'm telling you, y'all, y'all gonna be seated. I'm telling you, man, look. So we showed up uh, yesterday uh, on Saturday. And I tell you, man, you talk about being proud, right? I'm talking about having pride in what God is doing through this ministry, man. Because Melvin tell me a lot of times, Walter, what is the vision? Because I could come in here saying one thing, but not knowing what God have installed for us. And I tell you, we went out yesterday. We fellowship. I mean, that little continental brothers. And, you know, we fellowship, got the word. It was man and man. That's the topic I got to speak on, man and man. It was another topic, man and marriage. Come on, man. The Bible said, man, to find up a wife, find a good thing, and obtain favor. And until you get married, you don't get that favor from God. Now, you are living in the blessing. God going to bless you and your spouse, you and your girlfriend. Once you get married, it's a favor you obtain. And then he talked about man and family. So I tell you, man, the man we went out yesterday, man, and we got filled. You know, uh, and even though this morning, you know, as I was talking to some of the guys, I said, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to allow space for the guys. Ain't nothing against the ladies, baby. We're going to get, I know you're going you to create something. All right. Amen. Amen. Because we need to see a leading man. Man, you need to be back in your home leading your family. As much as you follow Christ, I'm telling you, man, the women going to come after you, man. Because God created you for him. And he created the women for you. But I'm telling you, if you continue to follow God, man, the women going to submit. She going to want to, man. Because of the love of God that's on you, then you're going to show her. I'm telling you, man, it works. And we got some of that teaching yesterday, man. And my prayers was that we left off different than the way we came. So I just want to feel the guys. I think uh, who was Steve, Wayne, uh, uh, a few of the guys. Come on, y'all say y'all y'all want to share something. Come on, come on, come on. Where we at? Where we at? No, no. Come on, come on, come on, come up here. Come up, yeah. Come on, man. Come up, come up, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Come on. Let God use it. Come on, man. Don't worry about. It. Scott. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a recovered alcoholic. And he said wanted to share something. I'll start out with this. He asked me this morning, uh, Elder Walter said, I came in this morning and I gave him a hug because I really got to spend some time with him yesterday at the men's conference. And uh, came up and hugged him and he looked at me and said, you're going to share a testimony today? And immediately it put me on a spot and I felt a cold chill run through me. And I was like, this is what I should have said and what I did say what I should have said is if the spirit moves me but what I said instead was if the spirit or what I should have said if the spirit moves but what I said was if the spirit moves me see that was me trying to get out of the situation well, apparently the spirit moved because he caught me in the hallway and he said so you're going to give a testimony today I'm like 
got me. Um, did I want to share? No. Honestly, I didn't. Um, and I was thinking about it. I guess I guess what I'll share with, I'll share with, because I didn't really know, I mean, because it's a recovery-based thing, and people, different faith systems, they have different higher powers, God, whatever you want to call it. So I'll just share about the God that I understand, and the one that understands me. I'll share a quick thing. Basically, what I'm going to share with you is I'm going to share with you a testimony about an addict alcoholic and how much God loved me. See, because 21 years ago, in change, I was sitting in a house of pain in Charleston, North Carolina. And I sat on a couch covered in plastic in my spot that I sat in in that house because that was my seat. I earned that seat. And a man looked me in the face and he said, Scott, you're a great guy and you got a big heart. But you know what? You are too unpredictable because of that substance you put into your body. And this isn't personal. This is business. And when he said that, I stuck my hand down next to the seat because that's where I kept my 357 Magnum Colt Python. And when I put my hand down there, it was gone. See, because I didn't check when I walked in and I sat down in that house. And I knew what time it was. It was my time. It's a long story because God later showed me what that whole situation was about. It wasn't necessarily about me. It was very convenient. And I did very well. You know, I acquired certain talent, skills, and abilities when I was in the military that certain organizations and institutions find very usable in yes. that world. Yes. 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 And I was good at what I do. I found what didn't want to be found. And I brought it back so they could be held accountable. That's what I did. No feeling, no remorse. I looked people in the face and I lied. I told them everything's going to be okay. I know what's going on. I know the situation. I understand it. You know what? Just say this, just do that, and everything will be all right. No feeling, no emotion, no love, nothing. Completely shut off. I did it with a smile on my face. That's the kind of man that I have become. Let alone the fact that I was using drugs and alcohol. I really wasn't much of a man. It was more of a tool, an instrument to be used. And to be discarded and thrown away when I wasn't useful anymore. That's how people viewed me. That's how I viewed myself. I learned that from a young age as a child. I'm nothing more than a tool, an instrument. I'm a device. I'm not a man. I'm not a person. I'm not a child of God. I'm an instrument. When I reached out and I found out that that pistol wasn't there, my pistol that I had earned. I knew what time it was, and I put my hand, suddenly it hit me. I knew exactly what was going to transpire with me. I'm not talking about the next 30 seconds. I was talking about the next forever. What was going to happen to me and where I was going to go. And I put my hand, I, I knelt down. I was on the couch, I bed down, and I put my hands in my head, and I started thinking, not yet. I said this word out loud. To God. Honestly, I said it to God. See, I was raised in the church as a Lutheran, but I never had a relationship with him. I didn't believe he existed. I had no understanding of him. It wasn't because of ignorance or anything. He just never really clicked with me. Because I was my own God. And I sat down like this. I need more time to figure out how to get out of this room with one door, one man here, and the people that brought me into this organization, the two of them were standing there with a man just like me behind them to make sure they were going to do what needed to be done because they brought me in, blood in, blood out. Four people, one door, nine feet to the door, no weapon, back room, I'm seat. That's, that's, that's how I am. Run into the scenarios like a computer, like a supercomputer in my mind. If I do this, 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 nope, boom, I take one. If I do this, 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 I can get this one, nope, couldn't get out. I'm running through all these computations. I know how I can get out, I can get out, I can get out, I can get out. I couldn't come up with anything, and the whole time I'm like, not yet, not yet, just give me more time, not yet, not yet. And it suddenly dawned on me, I came to my senses. And y'all gonna think, you shouldn't think this is crazy because I'm giving a testimony. See, it's a test. I'm challenging you to test what I'm about to say so that you'll have a moaning or matrimony. And in that test, I hope that you 
Mary in here. Teach, man. Teach, man. Teach, man. Teach. I raised my hands, my head out of my hands because I was praying, not yet, not yet. I didn't say God, I didn't say Jesus, I didn't say anything. It just I called out to something other than myself. Not yet. Give me more time. I was asking for a few seconds. Give me a couple seconds more because I can figure this out on my own without you. Without you. And when I raised my hand, my head up from my hands, I looked and everything stopped. The picture on the TV was frozen. The man in the seat next to me didn't move. I was close to the beach enough that sand particles in the air froze and didn't move. As God as my witness, my father is my witness, this happened. I stood up, I walked past everyone I got in my car, and I drove away. From that moment on, when I lifted my head up, I knew exactly who had heard my prayer. I knew exactly who showed up in that moment. And you know what? The truth is, it's never left me since then. This process of recovery over the last 21 years, I've had moments where I burned my Bible out. I don't want anything to do with you. And he's never left. I was an addict who had done horrible things to people. And you know what? He wanted me. He answered my prayer. And it's been this constant process. I walked up here, I'll close with this. I walked up here and I said, my name is Scott, I'm a recovered addict. You know what? That's the name that was given to me by my dad. What I found out is who showed up in that room and I know his name. I call him Father. He gave me a bunch of different names. He called me friend, he called me man, he called me lover, he called me his son. That's what I challenge you. I challenge you to say that. Word. Cry out, ask as if he's there and watch what happens. It's absolutely amazing. That's my testimony. And that's a testimony towards his goodness because in the midst of the filth and the pain that I was in, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to keep him from me. He saw through all of that. It showed up on my doorstep. And there's people that I've met that said, when you clean up your life, God will bless you. When you stop doing this, he'll show up in your life. That has not been my experience. He showed up in the midst of all that. Then cleaned me up. Come on. Mike, look, if this man would have told me when I asked him, he had all that in him, I wouldn't ask you, 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 because I, I, <laughs> I, I just could have gave him more. Man, thank you, man. Thank, thanks for allowing the spirit to move with me. I started hearing homicidal, suicidal thoughts um, in the act of our behavior, not acting out on them. You know, when you talk about the, the gun and you know, all the things he began to talk about, but then I started hearing God move. And that's what God does, man. In spite of our thinking and in spite of our choices, God will be God. Amen. And it's our responsibility to share the testimony. Because that may be your testimony. I don't I don't know you. There's a story. No, we have been raised on listening to history, right? But 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 I need to hear his story. Come on, man. Cause that's how we overcome. I need to hear. I, I need. To, I need to hear his story, man. Because we we more alike than different, man. And I'm just grateful, man. I'm gonna let. I'm, I'm let. I'm let one more press. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get you next week. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Come, Mike, Mike, come on. Come, Mike, Mike got something he want to give us, and then we're gonna look at this video, right? Come on, Mike. Mike, Mike, prepare. I, I love, I love that preparation. And who it was, somebody else. I'm gonna get you guys next week, cause I'm gonna make sure we get out of here, because I know other people have, you know, other responsibilities, you know, that, that we got to obtain. So I'm definitely. But come on, Mike. Give, come on, Mike. Come on. This Mike, man. Come on. Let's thank God for Mike. Mike, my man. Good morning.
First of all, I want to thank God and who's the head and leader of my life, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, just want to tell y'all, man, that today is my father's birthday, man. He passed away when I was in jail. And I'm going to tell you, that last 23 months, man, that I served doing time, man, I did a lot of time was the hardest. I did it without alcohol and drugs. And that was hard, right? But God gave me so much more, man. He gave me songs and poetry and I mean, many, many songs. And I want to share this song with uh, with you all. But it comes out of the book of Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 4.16. I want to read it first. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then... We which are alive are and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh. All right, so. The Lord's voice will shout, and the trumpets will thunder. Yeah. Every knee shall bow, in the heavens and under. His light will shine bright, so you can see through the darkness. He gave up his life, so you can live in abundance. His name is Jesus. There's power in his name. His name is Jesus. Your life will be the same. His name is Jesus. So glad that he chose me. His name is Jesus. Salvation in your name. The Lord's voice will shout. And the trumpets will thunder, every knee shall bow, in the heavens and under, his light will shine bright, so you can see through the darkness, he gave up his life, so you can live in abundance, Jesus, there's power in his name, Jesus, your life won't be the same, Jesus, so glad that he chose me, Jesus, salvation in your name. Love, peace in your kindness. Self-control in your patience. Meekness, be gentle. But practice always your faithfulness. I got to read this book because it's a way to live. Put the word in motion. Remember, always give. Learn to love my neighbor like I love my kids. And when I get knocked down, I get up again. It's a daily battle. My back's on the road. Look up to Jesus with my strength and hope. Did all I can. I stand toe to toe. Standing still in faith. I heard the trumpets blow. The Lord's voice will shout. And the trumpets will thunder. Every knee shall bow. In the heavens and under, his life will shine bright. You can see through the darkness, he gave up his life. So you can live in abundance. You know, uh, man, look, that's my thanks, man. That, that's what I, I thank God for the Machete Foundation that allowed breaking the bondage of addiction ministry to come in. I'm grateful that we are a non-denominational spiritual ministry because when you operate in your authentic space, man, I'm telling you, some churches you go to a church they be like why is he rapping but if are you listening to the words that's coming out of his mouth because he's being him you know what i mean and that's all i ever wanted to be man i got tired on taking the image of other people i told me this thought as a child 
I ain't like how dark I was. I ain't like how big my lips was. I, I never like, but today I just could be me, man. And I have a place that we can worship the God as we understand him in our authentic space with the gift that operate in us. Come on, man. I don't care how crazy. Because sometimes I do sound crazy trying to sing, can I know. <laughs> but I know I'm love here. I know I'm, it was love. Come on, y'all. Let's just thank God for the love. Let's just thank God for the love, for the love, for the love. Amen. Amen. And again, you guys, this is this is the only place I've been able to come to and, and, and hear poetry. And I can hear a rap song and we're going to watch. Look, we're going to go to the movie because we're going to watch the video. I mean, yeah, then we're going to hear a word of God. I mean, you can, you can come here at Breaking the Bond of Addiction Ministry. And knowing that's how God speaks. You know, the Bible, again, it says the earth is the Lord, the foot is the up, and everything that dwells in it belongs to God. So God can use any of his tools. Like you said, we're just instruments, right? He can use any of his tools to speak through, whether it's audio, whether it's video, Whatever your learning style is, you know, uh, so I'm grateful. So we can watch this video on the 11th step. Amen. Then I got a word. I got the step. I'm going to talk about the step and the word. I'm going to try to combine them two together for a lack of time. And then we can get up out of here. Amen. Amen. Hit that light to me. I'm sorry. To push, push that. Chris going to get me. You know, I was surrendered to the fact that I was going to be a heroin addict and a junkie. And that's all I was, and that there was nothing more to me. I think she's in here. And I was okay with that at that moment. I decided that, you know, my kids would probably be better off without me. You know, I knew that they couldn't see me like that, and I couldn't keep doing that to them. Please, are you okay? Open it! That was what made me shift and ask my mom to take my kids. Fast forward a little bit or just, you know, during this time period, you know, me and my boyfriend were living out of a living out of my car at the time. We did anything and everything to feed the addiction. I remember just thinking in my head, like, when is this going to be over? When is this going to be over? But I also was saying, you know, I need to do this so I can get my drugs and stay with my boyfriend. I remember, you know, just something inside of me breaking. We pull off these these side roads and you know try to make sure nobody would find us. Like I knew it was over in that moment. I do remember feeling a sense of relief because I knew I didn't want to live that life anymore, but I didn't know how to get out of it. I just remember tossing and turning in that little cell, wanting to, to get out. And I remember being so sick. I mean, it was horrible. And I felt so unworthy, you know, of God's love that he would, you know, even be willing or wanting to take the time to talk to somebody like me. Personal revelation and prayer and meditation just seemed so foreign to me. But I remembered how I grew up all came flooding back. <laughs> and primary songs came flooding back. Heavenly Father, are you really there and you hear and answer every child's prayer? And that was the first prayer that I ever uttered in recovery. It was a song. You know, I think sometimes we think, oh, our prayers have to look a certain way or they have to be formal or, you know, have to be kneeled down and, 
and all gratitude. And don't get me wrong, you know, I, I'm, you know, gratitude's important, but he wants to hear, he wants to hear our thoughts and our feelings, and he wants us to be authentic and be ourselves. And, you know, sometimes I might have some anger and that's okay, and the Lord can take it. You know, if he can't, who can? And that's what step 11 for, is for me, you know, um, and is it is a maintenance step. It's something that I have to continue to do. But now it's something that I use, you know, every day. I have to use every day. It's my lifeline. It's the it's the blood of my existence, you know, of my of my recovery today. I have since gotten my kids back. They get to learn those primary songs that I learned and I want them to always have that foundation that I had. And I get to, you know, put them to bed every night and tuck them in and kiss them goodnight and tell them I love them and that I'll be there in the morning. And that is a gift from recovery and from working these steps. Amen, amen. Maybe one day we'll get a popcorn machine in the back. Y'all can have some popcorn with the movie. Amen. Amen. So let's take a look at the 11th step today. The 11th step. Amen. 11th step. We sort through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as revealed in the Bible, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. I know it, it read a little different as revealed in the Bible. That's not uh, the way that most people read it in Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. You know, uh, but our information comes from life, living recovery, living life recovery. So it's, it's going to read the, what the God say about the step and then direct us to his scripture you know, to help us unpack that step. Um, but the gift, the gift of the 11th step is the gift of serenity. You know, as you continue to, to embrace that 11th step, sorting through prayer, sorting through prayer, that don't mean you can pray one time, right? Sort me a, a, a continuing, you know, we're going to spend time with God, you know, uh, to get to know his ways because his ways are not our ways, nor is his thoughts our thoughts. Right. Just as far as the heaven is from the earth, his his ways out. I'm telling you, man, God work things out the way. I mean, sometimes he he allow us to get incarcerated. Come on, man. Right. Right. In other words, we thought we was arrested, but he rescued us. Come on, man. Plus, uh, put put us in a place of confinement. Right. Right. Because we are sorting through prayer. We're, we're, we're trying to see how God going to work it out. You know, most time we. Estelle, we're trying to figure it out when he already worked it out. Right, right, right. So that's that sort through prayer and, and meditation. You know, it's, it's, it's taking time sitting still long enough to hear God respond to that we gave him. Because you're anything like me, man. I, look, I pray, get up and try to do the works myself. I ain't hearing nothing from God. Matter of fact, most time I call one of you guys. <laughs> and then I keep calling and keep calling until I hear what I want to hear. And then I say, that's God. But when the consequences or the result, then I realize I need to practice patience, right? Because that's another spiritual principle. Not only do I need to practice patience, I also need to practice tolerance, right? Because I got to tolerate my own behavior while I wait on God, right? And that's that meditation time. That's that meditation time. And it said to improve, right? It's not that I don't have a relationship with God because I got this back in the third step, right? I was trying to understand who he was then, right? But right now I'm talking about to improve, right? That relationship 
right? To see how he worked, right? To get an understanding of his will and not mine. Because his will gonna be done. I turn my eyes over to him in the third step, right? My will is simply what? My choices. I ain't gotta struggle with all these words. I gotta do look them up, right? <laughs> get a dictionary, you know? So really my will is my choices, right? And we all struggle with our will, right? Even Jesus, even Jesus struggled with his will. Y'all remember him struggling with his will? Well, I'm gonna remind you if you don't remember, all right? It was in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? He has his buddies, he has his friends. Can y'all not just sit here and, and, and just wait while I go up? Because sometimes when you spend time with God, everybody can't go with God carrying you, right? So so he and he knew that with his boys, y'all yeah, sit here, y'all y'all hold tight. Right. It's, it's, it's something that I got to do because this is why I was sent. But I'm loving on you guys. I'm loving the work that I'm doing. So I got to go talk to the father about this. Right. Because Jesus will look Jesus like father. <laughs> I really want you to take my responsibility, my assignment from me. Right. Please, please take this cup. Right. Because he knew taking in the cup what was going to happen. He knew. Right. He was God in man form. He knew. But he knew his reason from coming. He knew his purpose from being here. And so he struggled just like we struggle sometimes. Right. Even with our contact, even with us knowing who God is and all he have already done. We talking about that hard thing. Hey, Janice, we talking about that hard thing that we struggle with. Right. Especially when it comes down with our children. Come on, man. We, look, sometimes we don't want to trust God. We want to take, we want to go to court and tell the lawyer what to do. Look, get, look, the reason why I have from the way they are is because what we've done anyway, right? Opposed to allowing God will to be done in their life because they need to develop their own experience, right? So, so, so we struggle with our will. Jesus struggled with his will, right? He said, God, if it be thine will, take this, take it away, take it away. And sometimes we struggle with our choices, even in our relationship. I'm talking about at this point. I'm talking we had the 11th step. The 11th step is the maintenance step. I'm talking about at this point in our recovery, right? At this point in our relationship, we still struggle. And Jesus struggled. He struggled. He struggled. It said God, right? Our conscious contact with God is revealed in the Bible. That's why I'm so grateful. We do have a scripture I'm going to take a look at, right? Praying only for the knowledge of his of his will, right? Here it is, here it is. And the power, that's why I want to land that. And the power to carry it out. We can't do anything on our own. We have to wait from the power from up high. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about, man, I'm talking about, I'm talking about when you're dealing with a spiritual program, and we're talking about the power of the program, what does the power lies at? The power lies in the people. Come on, we call them predecessors, those who came before us. It's so important that we stand, that, that, that well, yeah, I'm going to say it this way. It's so important that we lay at their feet. It's so important that we spend time with our sponsor. Right? It's so important that we get with the group because the group is the most powerful, the most powerful vehicle. Right? Right? In the program of, of Alcoholics Anonymous and in the program of Narcos Anonymous in the church. Because God speaks through, I, I heard God, I heard God through that young man. I, I heard God through that young man. I heard God through that young lady singing the song. Right? I'm talking about the, the group, right? Because we don't know how God, but it's the power of the group, right? And we all get on one accord, right? And the power to carry that out, we're talking about the message. We're talking about the message. Even in this setting, we're talking about the message. Amen. Yeah, so, so the 11th gift of serenity and, and the 11th law reads restitution will result into closure. How many of y'all got some stuff y'all just, just look, man, because of the law, man, look, I just want this stuff to be, look, look, man, and I'm grateful, look, look, and if you, look, a newer member, I want you to hear this, right? Because I'm grateful, man. You guys, when y'all say don't make those major decisions, right? In other words, before you get involved, because being in a relationship is a major decision. Make sure that you put closure on one before you open another. Put some closure on it. Realize why you're here, right? There's some stuff within yourself 
right, that you need to be working on before you open up some more stuff, right? Grateful, man. I'm grateful. That's a law. Restitution. Restitution. Being restored. Being restored. Now, let's put some closure on some stuff that we left over, right? And that's the 11th step, man. Then the Bible, right? The Bible scripture, it comes out of Galatians 2.20, the New International Version. It reads, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Come on, man. So if I were to title this text, I'm going to title it, I now live. I now live. We talking about step 10, 11, and 12. We talking about the maintenance stage, the maintenance stage of, of one's recovery. In other words, we maintain everything that we have already been through. And because we're able to maintain it, now we live. Come on, man. You think, look, you think you was living out there in a dying world. Come on, chasing the dope. Come on, chasing the coke. You think that was living, man. Right now, man, this is the best life. I'm telling you, man, when you spend time, right, when you spend time, you're going to find out this is the best life. And you're going you to have that testimony. I now live. I now live. Paul, he was an apostle, set not from man, but by or nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. He was addressing the church of Galatians in this letter, right? Informing them that God's gospel was interchangeable with God's righteousness, right? So this is what that means. Paul, he blend the law of God with the law of sin, right? Which means you can be a believer and still do wrong. That's what Paul was telling us, right? Because the Christian in the church of Galatians, they were so righteous, man. Like, 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 like you can't, if you do wrong, you're not saved. If you do wrong, you, you're not of God, right? In other words, uh, you could be clean and still crazy. Y'all ain't got to work. Well, I'm going to work it now, y'all. <laughs> I'm just telling you, man. Paul was trying to let us know, man. Look, look, look. You could be free of drugs, right? And still not free of the behavior, man. Come on, man. Just because you're recovered, that don't mean you exempt. You could be clean and still go to jail. Come on. This is what Paul was trying to talk to the people. Look, Paul went to the churches and he started talking to the people in the church. Y'all get in here and get so righteous. Come on. That's not what God, that's not God's law. Come on. God ain't come to call the righteous to repent. Come on, man. Jesus came for us. Those ones who was, we was filled of transgression. You know what transgression is? Transgression, it, it, it's sin. Transgression is sin. But transgression is willfully sin. Right? Some people sin. Right? Some people, some people fall short. But then you got those who choose short. We know what we're doing. We ain't got a desire to change. I just ain't smoking no more coke. <laughs> but some other stuff, I'm going to keep coming back. Oh, y'all ain't getting real with me, man. Come on, man. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm, I, 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 it's in the text. I hope you got your word with you. You can read, you can read the word and you'll find out it's in the text. So we can be in recovery. Come on. We can be in recovery. And we we watch that, right? We could be living clean, right? And sharing dirty. Paul just said it in the text. I'm gonna read it again. Here you go, here you go. Because sometimes I got I gotta unpack it. It said, Paul blend the law of God with the law of sin, which means. You can be a believer and still do wrong. In other words, you can be clean and still crazy. Y'all ain't got to help me, man. <laughs> man, I'm, try I'm just trying to tell you, man. Don't come and recover, right, and try to be somewhere you're not. God love you right where you at. I'm honest enough. To tell the newer member, here it goes, ready. I'm, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm saying this in the church, right? Right? Well, this is a ministry. This ain't a church. Let me make sure. But I'm telling you the truth, right? Right? Because early on, when they suggested, no, they told me, don't get with the newcomer. 
That, that, that's what they said. Uh, our literature said, don't make major decisions. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth, because I got with a newcomer, right? My son's 26 years old today. I'm 26 years clean, so I got with her when I was a newcomer. So I'm going to suggest to the newer member, right, protect yourself. And now go tell them that Reverend Walter, <laughs> Pastor Walter, I'm going to tell your sponsor. I ain't going to tell you because I did what I did. And that's what, look, that's what I like about ministry. That's what I like about sponsorship. That's what I like about what comes from the heart reaches the heart. Because you're going to do what you want to do. And I'm not trying to judge anybody's process, right? But the text said, as we sought through prayer and meditation, to prove our conscious contact, right? How do I reach the newer members? I can't expect a new member to be somewhere that they're not, right? Jesus, he came down and he said he came for the lost. He ain't come for the righteous, right? And he sat among us, right? And I'm grateful. I'm grateful that when I was in a crack house, right? And I was putting on a steel. I'm telling my truth now, right? I'm so grateful that when I was in a crack house and I was putting on my steel, right? And I was listening for those bells. Y'all know what those bells are? Y'all know them bells, right? But I'm going to tell you what the bells are. If you don't know what the bells are, hey, honestly, this is what the bells was. Because I don't know if you smoke crack like I smoke crack. I don't even know if you smoke crack. Let me tell you what the bells was. The bells was the temple inside your brain. It was ringing, right? And I was listening for the ring. I mean, my, my, my temple, I'm, it's going. But then this is what I learned when I kept coming back. I learned not only did God sit with me in the midst of the ring, God didn't allow the ring to bust. Because if that ring would have went off, right, this is what would happen, right? We call it an aneurysm to the brain. Man, you're talking about chasing death, man. Come on, man. But I had to sit down. I had to sit down long enough, right, before a sponsor, right, before other people, right, to show me God's way of doing things. We're talking about sorting, right? We're talking about spending that time. Through prayer and meditation, man, we talking about listening, right? We talking about spending time with people, right? So people can let us hear from God. God speaking four ways, right? Here it goes. I got to tell you this. I'm going to wrap it up. I don't left my whole message. I think my honesty walked in the room. I just shift my whole message. Uh, uh, that's, that's probably what happened. Pray for my honesty. But look, here it go, right? Here it go. God speaking four ways. We talking about sowing through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understand him. Praying for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry it out. So we got to identify, well, how do God speak? So here it is, God speaking four ways. Here you go, here you go. The first way God speak. And I love doing that here at the Machine Foundation. We do this every morning when I do groups and we do it here. And I do it with my sponsees, right, right, right? This is the first way God speak. It's called your feelings. How many of y'all know what a, your, your feeling check, right? God speak through our feelings. That's why it's how you feel. I feel happy. I feel sad, I feel disappointed, I feel excited, right? God's speaking to us through our feelings, right? But this is the thing about our feelings, Mason, right? Right? They say two things happen, right? Right? When you get your feeling back, right? Right? They say, they say, they say, the good thing is you get your feeling back, right? And then they say, the bad thing is you get your feeling back. <laughs> so a good thing and a bad thing happen. But that's one way God speaks, Chris. That's one way God speaks. A second way God speaks to us, Right, it's called our intuition. Y'all know your, your 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 gut. You know you you just you just know that's something. Like God is, you just know something. But a lot of time we don't we don't do the meditation part. We don't sit still long enough to hear from God. But we know it. We know some of us call it bubble guts. You know you get to score some dope and all. <laughs> and you're like, man, I'm telling you, man, that's the warning sign. I don't know about y'all, but it's times I went and got some dope and my bowels will break. I smell to go off in the car. You too, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's the warning sign. God is speaking, right? A third way God speaks, right? And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Mel Melvina don't know how much a blessing when I pick up the phone. Well, I see her name just come across on my phone when we talk. Because God speaks through people. Tell you, man, isolation, loneliness. Come on, man. God speak to me. Try not to ice. I mean, put yourself around people, man. But this one thing I want you to be real. Hold on. Wait a minute. Be real careful because too many people in your ear will make things unclear. But God speaks to people, man. Right? And we are only as strong as the people in our group. That's why we call a support group because this is where you get your information from. All right? All right? And the last and final way God speaks, right? 
And I'm going to challenge some of you guys because I ask you guys when we come here uh, on Sunday morning to bring your Bible, because God speaks through the word. Amen. God speaks through the word. And in this word that we read this morning, Galatians, I, I, look, I got eight pages. I just got to the first paragraph for the lack of time. But I really want you guys to go home and read Galatians chapter 20, right? It's a threefold ministry. You got God, God the Father, right? You got God the Son, and then you got God the believer. That's you. Come on, man. Because God wants you to turn all your chaos. He wants you to cast all your chaos on him, right? Now, your relationship may come through a 12-step ministry. Your relationship may come through smart recovery. You know, your relationship may come through harm reduction or, or risk reduction. However your relationship comes, that's your relationship. But I'm telling you, you become attraction. Because when you go back home to your community of people, you may be the only attraction. You may be the only sight of God that a person may be seeing. Some people say it's through the basic text. You know, some people say it through the Bible. We're talking about basic instruction for believers leaving earth. That's what Bible stands for. The basis instruction for believers leaving earth. Because we're going to leave here one day. And because we're in a spiritual program, right? We was created from the dust. And God himself blew his spirit in us and we became a living soul. So when we leave here, our spirit is going back to God. The breath that he blew is called the new walk of God, the breath of God. So the spirit goes back to God. The body decays in the ground. And so while we're here, it's just a great time and, and, and a great space to make that relationship, make that connection with you and God as you understand it. Continue to sort through him, through prayer and meditation to improve. Because you got a contact. I'll listen to that young man right there. You got a contact. Every time, no, nope, not every time. Most time I speak to you guys, you guys tell me how you came from a church, whether you was a Lutheran, whether whether you was a Catholic, you, you tell me you came from a, a church. And I understand here at the Michelle Foundation, we are non-denomination. I understand that and I love it. Because we all just can come together and have a God as we understand him. And come in here and thank him. Thank him for our space. Thank him for the Michelle Foundation that allowed breaking the bondage of addiction ministry to come in so we could get that relationship back with him. So when we leave here, we leave here different than the way we came. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for that word. Come on. And let us just stand so we can be dismissed. Come on, let us just stand so we can be dismissed. Just so grateful. Just so grateful uh, to God and, and all he do. And I think we got uh, a presentation. Okay. Hi, I'm interrupting. But this, but this is honest. This is, this, this is the CEO of the Machine Foundation. Let's thank God for the CEO. When I saw her presence, she just she just shift my whole message. But again, again, I'm telling you, man, what comes from the heart reaches the heart. And I tell you, man, just to be in a space, just being a place, right, where we could come together, right, and we could continue to sort through prayer and meditation to improve. Listen to this, you guys, to improve the greater work that God is calling us to do. All right, we are being filled, right, and we are to leave all here. And if we leave all here lifting up God, he'll do all the drawing. He'll do all the drawing. Our families come back together. We're talking about healing families and saving lives. And that's the mission. That's the greatest mission, the commission that God committed us to do. So we thank God. We thank God. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can you cut that just for a second? Cut that thing. I'm Honesty, and today is um, Pastor Appreciation Day. Oh. So, and I realized Jesse didn't do anything, so I jumped in my car and headed over. Um, and I gotta pick up my groceries too, so I'm gonna make this quick. But we love you. Um, this is a huge, huge addition to our mission, to our organization. I can't tell you how much it has helped the humans that we serve. Not even just the humans that we serve, but the feedback we get from the families of the humans that we serve is phenomenal. Um, and Walt is a part of our team, and I just wanted to say from all of McShan that we love you very much. I just smoked crack, but only when I was 15, and then I found heroin and never smoked crack.
Just to let you know. Oh, I love you guys. Woo. <laughs> Y'all just don't know this this woman right here. We be we be around here do, throughout the week. So I'm here full time. And I'm grateful they they found space. God, you are so great to me. And I can see her walking around throughout the day's operation, and she'll look at me and she'll say, "Praise Jesus." <laughs> she she say that stuff is just it's just the love. But uh, thanks thanks thanks, Machine Foundation. Uh, I was looking on Facebook, you know, uh, and I see other pastors and it's pastor appreciation month and i never i never thought about yes it did i'm gonna tell you the truth i did Stuart. i knew it i did i did you know i did i said i wonder i just want now i, I ain't say nothing nobody but I'm, I'm human and i gotta be my authentic I, I, I wonder and even when i saw you standing in the back I, I didn't think you know i didn't think that that's what i just i just owe you i then i saw you were breaking up the bondage of addiction shirt and again, you guys, come on, man. Come on, let's thank God for the shirt. Come on, come on, come on. And again, hey, hey, Janet, and I make sure I, I know Estelle won the shirt, but but we got the shirts for fifteen dollars. I mean, you can't, you can't. That, that that's that's less than what we paid, but we got to get the. Because one time we had a whole case, and we just gave all of them away. So this time we got it. So if you want one, just get with me. As a matter of fact, you can get the shirt and the mask. I set for twenty dollars. Are uh, you so just yes, you can just get with me. I get I get yours right after service. Just get with me and we'll make it happen. But I'm grateful, honestly. I'm grateful for the people of God. I'm so grateful that God used me because I still don't feel deserving. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man, I don't feel deserving. I still believe, Mason, if I got what I deserve, I wouldn't be here. So I just thank God with our hands lifted up. Come on, with our hands lifted up. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord God. And as we leave this place, but never your presence, let the words of our mouth and the meditation in our heart be acceptable in your sight. God, you are our spirit. You are our redeemer. What we say on the one, we're going to say on the all. Watch and